When witnessing the Mormon missionaries, one of the most common things you'll hear at the end of your first visit is their request for you to pray over the Book of Mormon. They turn to the end, Moroni 10, verses 4 and 5, which encourages you to ask God to know if these things, the Book of Mormon, is true. It promises if you pray with a sincere heart, with real intent, having faith, then you'll know it is true. Now, most Christians recognize the manipulative nature of this argument. Why you could ask someone to pray over any book to know whether it is true. Some Christians even turn that argument back and then ask Mormons if they were to, for example, pray over the Quran, would they then believe it is true? This approach can easily backfire because most would respond that, yes, it must contain some truths. So what do you do? Because you don't want to offend those you're trying to reach on the first visit, right? I might say something along the lines of this. You know, as a biblical Christian, you can respect, I wouldn't want to do anything outside what the Bible provides instruction for, especially in regard to such important spiritual matters. So, can you show me where in the Bible it tells me to pray over another book to then know whether it is true? Now, on this point, they might typically point to James 1.5. James 1.5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, and it will be given to him. Now, this is where it's important for you to immediately raise your hands, take control of the conversation, and say, you, you asked me to pray to know whether the Book of Mormon is true, so pray for knowledge. But James here is talking about wisdom. And there is a huge difference between wisdom and knowledge. 1 Corinthians 12, 8 lists them as entirely different gifts of the Spirit. You see, James was writing to Christians who already had knowledge of Scripture, and now they're asking for wisdom and how to apply it to their lives. In fact, the Bible is very clear on this matter. Deuteronomy 13 speaks of anyone who might come later with a message other than the Bible, and it emphasizes not to listen, even makes the point that by not listening to another message, you're proving your love for God. So because uh, we're compelled to hold on to what God has already given us in the Bible. I, I can't pray over the Book of Mormon, but I really look forward to studying what we already know to be true in the Bible. And as James encourages, try to ask for that wisdom to then apply it to our lives. We know that every time we study God's Word, He will bless it. Friends, I, I give you a lot of different information there, but here's a quick tip. Don't spend a lot of time on this point. At most, you, you want to deflect away from the Book of Mormon and pivot back into the words of life, where the Spirit can continue to work truth in their hearts. It's here in God's Word. They'll continue to learn God's love doesn't depend on, on knowing more or doing more. But as they read these words, they'll discover that in Jesus, they already have the love they've been looking for all along. Point them back to what we already have. And friends, go give them heaven.